Hey everybody, welcome back. Stonebroke Adventure. Another exciting episode on the Boston Whaler. Right there, that old Boston Whaler restoration, 1971. Exciting day, exciting episode. We're gonna put the motor on. Let's just get right into it. Look what I just got, it just showed up. You. All right. We got the 30 horsepower Suzuki. Come in a crate. Some uh, important. Uh, pre-start instructions on here we also got this little warning label right there just making sure you don't overfill the oil on it it's shipped without oil but it does have foot oil in it so let's uh, open the box up i didn't even need to take that tape off the top it just uncovers just like this Side console, the shifter, that's what's in this box. Instructions for that. We've got it's like mounting hardware for it, the actual motor, our owner's manual, fuel line, pump bulb. We have our uh, wiring harness right there. Uh, here's your uh, steering linkage. Look at it. It's brand new. We got to look at it. This thing is beautiful. Black on black. I could have gotten white. The white was a little bit more expensive, but it's going to look great at black on black. There she is, brand new. So we're going to start working on the installation on this. We're going to go through all the details how we need to install this. I've done tons of research on this back and forth. I have a 20 inch shaft going on a 15 inch transom. This is the 30 Suzuki. It only comes in a 20 inch shaft. How do we accomplish that and get the right elevation for the cavitation plate? So this is what we came up with. Got this product off of eBay. They do sell a product like this on Amazon, I'll leave a link down below for the Amazon product, but it's an aluminum angle, right? We considered a jack plate, but I think with the jack plate, we're gonna have too much of a problem with the setback. That four stroke is a little bit heavier than an old two stroke. And if we set that back off of the transom too much, I think it's gonna kind of screw up the weight distribution on that. This is gonna solve our problem. Real heavy, it's like a half inch angle. Uh, I believe it's a three by five angle. The holes that are in it match up perfectly with the Suzuki, right? We have the other one right there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, install these. But first, what we gotta do is we have to hoist this thing up. So this gave me a good excuse to work in the shop and put a little gantry unistrut overhead gantry system but we have these little clips here and these little clips are all lag bolted into studs that motor is only I believe 156 pounds so one stud it hold it my attic space is made to carry a load so we should be fine there I've got them spaced on every single stud that's a 10 foot piece of unistrut I have one, two, three, four, five of those brackets distributing the load. I have the V-Bore little hoist, electric hoist we'll be using. Link down below for that if you want to get one. So uh, links for those little clips, that hoist, all down below. And then also if we look here, the little trolley. Look at that, look how that slides back and forth, right? I think it was only like 10 bucks. That thing will hold, I believe, 900 pounds, maybe more than that, but more than I'd be using anywhere in the garage. So we're gonna go ahead and hoist this up and uh, install these brackets. See if we can get the motor installed. This is gonna make easy work of this. We 
we've got hoisted up, let's move everything out of the way. That way we can work on this, get this down to a good safe level. All right, let's bolt this other bracket on. And then we're gonna have to uh, set this thing up on the boat, get everything centered up. Okay, so what my intentions are on this is I wanna set this, I wanna set this cavitation plate dead even with the bottom of the keel, the flat part and the bottom of the keel. I'm gonna install this top bolt right here onto the second hole down. So that's my plan. And then that way, if I need to go a little bit lower, I can drop this motor about three and quarters of an inch lower. If I need to go higher, I can drop it higher and I can raise it up higher. So we're gonna go ahead and set this in here. That set, boy, this, this crane is really nice. I can definitely get all my work done real easy. That bolt down on the bottom is just temporary. Now we can snug everything up because we're not gonna want this to move. Same on this side, we've already got this bracket on here. That way we can line up our holes on the boat, get some marks. All right. All right, we wanna make sure this motor is centered and square, square to the bottom of the boat. Don't worry about the top, we gotta to worry about the bottom of the boat. So what I wanna do on the trailer here, I'm gonna get, get some marks on this, but I wanna make sure that this boat is level. Okay, this side needs to come up some more on the trailer. So I've got these wooden shims. We're just gonna shim this up. We're gonna go ahead and mark a line on this. We wanna make sure that we get a nice line from dead center. The drain plug is dead center on this. So we're gonna run a nice level line. We got our center line on the boat. So we're gonna come off of that uh, three inches, come off of that three inches. That's gonna be the inside of our rails. We can line this thing up, get it level on the bottom, and then mark our holes where we need to drill. I think I've got everything lined up, so let's go ahead and Drill through the transom. Pretty intimidating, but gotta do it. got it bolted up temporarily all the holes line up we're going to drill a couple more holes in this bracket right here um, the bracket has the holes we just need to drill through this transom just to make sure that this uh this bracket is nice and solid so let's go ahead and let this thing down keep our fingers crossed Check the uh, location, make sure we're lined up where we want to be lined up. Right off the bottom, comes up. We are right, I think we're right where we need to be on this. If anything, if we have to come down, we can, and that would be just about right. But it looks like, looks like that's where we want to be. Okay, we got everything, all the elevations set correctly to mount on the second hole from the top. So this is where our bolt pattern is right here. We've got this bolt's gonna hold it secure. This bolt's gonna hold it secure. The problem is, is this weird belly in the transom of these old whalers. What we need to do is we need to drill this hole right here. I think we're gonna go in this top one and that's gonna secure this whole bracket to the boat. We need to worry about securing the bracket to the boat solid 
and then we'll shim the motor if we need to. I got some washers that will shim. So let's go ahead and we're gonna drill this hole and we're gonna drill that hole right there. We're gonna clamp this thing down. We'll put some caulk underneath it on the other side, secure it into place, and then we'll uh, mount the motor. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and repeat, do the same thing on the other side here, and uh, snug everything down. Man, this overhead crane's nice. A little bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but we got it. We're going to tighten everything down. All right, we're going to go ahead put the helm on. Get a little mark here where we need to drill through. We've kind of got it positioned here, so right. I don't need to worry about smashing my hand here. I've got a little space in the back. Let's go ahead and get this first hole drilled. We know that one's going there. Real nice position for this, right? Gonna give me what I need. We have the cables, and I did a little bit of research on the uh, shifter cables. Do you use eight foot or 10 foot? Um, actually, I think a nine foot would be perfect, but it's hard to find a nine foot. I went ahead and got the 10 foot cables, shifter throttle cables for the Suzuki. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of a loop in this after we install it. Um, that way there's plenty of flex on it. So let's go ahead and install these. Um, follow the instruction and the user manual of your motor and uh, just take your time with it. So we're gonna run the wiring harness. We have it plugged into the rubber grommet. We're gonna run it through. Right up front, you have the 15 pin plug on the other side. Let's go ahead and plug that in. There you go, clips right in. Right, we got both grommets in there. Right, so this motor comes with these little end clips. And we're going to go ahead and screw those on. We're going to screw those on about halfway. I like that. And we're going to tighten up the little lock nut. Do that on both pieces. Here's our shifter connectors here. They got these really cool little locking pins on here. Just pull this out of the way. And then that pin's gonna slide right out. Just like this, don't lose your washer, right? A little spring-loaded clip. We're gonna install the shifter level, lever first. And it's the same cable for each side. I'm gonna set that right there. And pull that, pop that, and that pops right into place just like that. And you see? It sets right on that nut. We're gonna do the same thing for the throttle. That's the shifter. So the shifter mechanism, the throttle mechanism. Pinned in, in place. We've reinstalled the support bracket. We have everything running through the grommet. So we need to put a loop in this and then we're gonna attach it to the console. That console is just, this little shifter console is just temporary right now, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove it and install our shifter cable into that. So today we got some uh, of this two inch cable chase here. We're gonna stuff the cables in. We're gonna dress all this stuff out. One thing that's kind of disappointing when I got this motor was the wiring harness. You didn't really have, I didn't have an option where I bought this to uh, get just the simple wiring harness. This wiring harness is so long. There's so much cable. I'll be able to stuff it in the chase. But then it comes with all these different adapters. You know, you got, of course, the, the, the shifter, so I'm gonna use that. But then you have all these different plugs for all kinds of different gauges. 
It's a Suzuki, so they have like a smart interface. That's what this plugs for. I'm not gonna be using that. I'm not gonna have a computer on this boat. I don't need all of this stuff. If anything, all I would need is the tachometer, single tachometer with the temperature gauges. But if you're getting a motor, um, if you have an option to like really trim down on all this extra cabling, you know, it's just a lot of extra work, a lot of extra stuff that I don't need. I don't want to cut into this and cap it off, but um, that's something to think about. So let's go ahead. We're going to just continue to run this cable in the chase, get everything nice and dressed out. So here we take our time. We're getting close, right? So this is the point where I'm starting to get excited and I'm getting distracted because I want to get this thing on the water. But I just got to keep looking at the task at hand. Don't get too far ahead of myself. Make sure I get everything done. This is where you can make a crucial mistake. Maybe uh, start the motor without oil in it just because you're excited. So we're going to just keep working at this thing. Get everything cleaned up, dressed up. We'll probably take this out, wash it down, um, get the oil in the motor, uh, do a little test start on it. So... Uh, that's, that's where we're at right now. All right, it's been a year and a half. We got this thing just about done. Uh, it's time to fire up this motor. We've checked the oil on it, uh, put oil in it that we needed. We put a little bit of foot oil in it. It came with foot oil. We just topped it off, just made sure everything's good. Went through our startup checklist. You can see here we have all the cables run nice and neat. All right, up to this point, but we're gonna dress this out a little bit, all these loose wires here. We're gonna dress that out. We'll probably get a tachometer on this, but this is this is ready to go in the water. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the water on, fire this thing up. I'm gonna have me a little fake beer and uh, uh, see how this thing runs. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. Battery's positive, negative, negative. I hear a beep. Put it in neutral. Nope, we're gonna have to adjust the shift cable. Imagine that, our shifter's out of whack. Let me go ahead and I'll see which way I need to adjust this. We can still start it. Thank you.